been a wild week here because we're moving out of the studio. We're moving out of the, the house, actually. So you can see here, uh, this is the very last stuff to go out. And a uh, lot's going on uh, this week. There's a uh, convention in Charlotte this weekend, or this coming weekend. Got to go there and do that. And uh, move into our new place. The Explosion 7 just came out. It's my newest book. The next book, uh, no one knows about it yet except you guys, and it's going to be called uh, Sketch Madness. And there's going to be a collection of unseen sketches. Uh, and this is a collection of sketches, that are part of it anyway, uh, that I've kept over the years. And uh, you can see it's an awful lot of stuff. It's about probably six feet uh, stacked up of... Uh, Sketches of uh, all sorts of things, my mind running amok that uh, no one's ever seen. So we're going to collect those into a book, uh, at least uh, do several volumes probably. So that's coming soon. Um, Sketch Madness, Volume 1. Hey you guys, I'm at North Myrtle Beach today, staying with a friend of mine and uh, doing a big painting for his house. A custom painting, sort of a phase 2 thing. And it's uh, the canvas is three by four feet, and uh, I'm going to use some gold paint on this and some spray paint, different things. You can see here, see here I've got things masked off. So uh, next step is to cover that area on the left and then uh, hit it with some spray paint. Okay, well I couldn't really video while I was doing the spray painting. This is what we have so far. And, uh, you can see I use the, uh, the negative pieces here to uh, stencil out some old forms. So next thing to do is to pull off the stencil and see what it looks like. You know, picking it up, it looks pretty good. The edge looks uh, nice and soft. But uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a little glow by holding this stencil up and hitting it with a little more spray paint. Well, there we go. That's pretty good. It's not as accurate as it could have been possibly, but um, probably need an airbrush to do something like that. Anyway, it's a pretty good effect. And here's trick number two to get a sort of accurate highlight. Uh, cut a hole. You can do a larger or smaller, and you hold it over and hit it with spray paint. So do that next. Yeah, that seems to be coming along well. Now we're going to do another little trick to make some beams of light uh, shoot off this peak here. And to do that, use the ready-made slit in the Home Depot box. Okay, I think that's enough for that. Now I'm kind of improvising and ad-libbing as I'm going along with this whole project. So I'm looking at the entire picture and wondering what it needs next. And I kind of know what it needs next. Uh, basically, we're, we have two values now and we need, a, uh, we need another value. Uh, like I said, I'm going to use gold in this too. So gold is not necessarily a value, but it will be a fourth element. And that will satisfy the four uh, prerequisites of a painting. That is four values. So we're going to whoop up a, uh, a third value and uh, my instincts tell me that what I need to do is mix the cerulean blue with its uh, complementary color, which would be orange, oddly enough. So here we go with the gold. And as I said, it's kind of abstract, uh, linear. Uh, it's going to stand out a bit from the surface and hopefully complement the whole thing. But at any rate, you can see the spontaneity uh, with which I put down this stuff, and that's these lines are going to determine uh, how I fill in the rest of it. So it's down there now. Here we go, drawing in the sun. This gold stuff up top, once that dries, and it takes a little while because it's, it's thick and bumpy, then it's going to get a coating of gold over top. Just brushed on some areas I'll leave blank I'll leave that blank and I'll leave that blank and I'll probably add some other stars around here and it'll create a nice eye path to come out of that and come into the rest of the picture 